Hi everyone, uh, for today's video I will show you how you uh, configure the scenario where you want to extend analog lines over IP network using the two grand stream devices GXW4100 and GXW4000. This implementation is actually very popular in cases where you want to uh, extend analog lines from let's say building building A to building B without the need to run uh, physical analog lines and without the need to have uh, an IP uh, PBX. This implementation actually uh, uh, also allows you uh, like to have a remote location to access the local ports lines in the headquarters, for example. You can also implement this scenario between the countries. For example, you can have the analog devices plugged into the FXS gateway in USA and the POTS lines plugged into the FXO gateway, let's say, in France. So by just picking up the uh, analog phone in USA, you will be able to make calls from the POTS lines in France. This way, you won't be charged for international calls. And I've seen a lot of people using this type of implementation. And what you're seeing right now here is uh, a diagram that was taken from the Grand Stream website. Uh, then you have the first one, you have the uh, GXW4100. Uh, it can be connected to either POTS lines coming from the PSC and cloud, or you can actually get uh, uh, the lines from a traditional PBX. Let's say you have traditional PBX in, in, uh, in Denver, and you want users, for example, in Boston, uh, to make calls out of that PBX, you can actually use it for the same scenario. So for this implementation to work successfully, the two devices uh, need to be reachable and able to talk to each other. Uh, even though you can assign public IP addresses to both devices to make them reachable on the public network, I actually do not recommend in using that because uh, that will jeopardize the security of your devices and you might end up having both devices unresponsive when they get under hacking attack. Uh, what I usually recommend is putting these devices behind a firewall and just configure port forwarding on the firewall and allow traffic only from uh, each device on each side and, and block all the other traffic. So for our implementation today, I will create a peer-to-peer -peer connection between uh, GXW4100 and the GXW4000. And I will also be using port-to-port -port mapping between FXS port to FXO port. In other words, if the analog phone connected to FXS3 makes an outbound call, we want it to use FXO port 3. And the same thing for incoming calls, if a call comes in from channel three on GXW4100, we want it to be forwarded to FXS port three on the FXS gateway. So now that we talked about the implementation, let's just go ahead and start configuring our devices. So I have the first device is GXW4100. Then the second device is the FXS gateway GXW4000. So I'm just going to log in. And by the way, if when you get the GXW4000 for the first time, the web interface is disabled by default. So you need to plug in an analog phone to one of the FXS ports and then dial the option three, uh, three stars, like star, 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 send. Then you will get prompted with a voice menu. Choose 12, dial. If it tells you the web access in interface is disabled, make sure you press nine to enable the interface. So once you do that, hang up the phone and then reboot the gateway. And then after that, you will be able to get access to the web interface of the gateway. You can get the IP address just by again, plugging uh, an analog phone to the FXS port. And then you can dial from the phone star star, star three times, you will get the, the, the voice menu. And from the voice menu, just enter zero two, and then it's gonna spell the IP address for you. And the credentials, by default, it's admin. 
So the first thing we need to do when we configure in the GXW 4000 or the FXS gateway is put the IP address of the FXO gateway. So I have the FXO gateway here. So the IP address that I'm using for the FXO gateway is 22.97. I'm sorry, that was a mistake on my, my side. So you're just gonna need to put the IP address. And then there are some other changes that you need to, to make. Uh, so after you enter the primary SIP server, which is gonna be the IP address of the FXO gateway, the next day, make sure you disable SIP registration because we're not gonna be using uh, SIP registration. Random port, make sure it is set up, set to, uh, to no, never set that one to yes. And another one here, uh, never set to keep alive. Always keep it for the NAS, NAS traversal, keep it uh, to know. And then uh, there's that option here. It's called outgoing call without registration. Make sure you set that one to yes. So you will be able to make calls because we're not using uh, registrations. So that's it. That's most of the stuff that you need to do unless you have some uh, uh, reasons to make other changes. But making the changes that I just show you will be enough to make it work. So after that, we're just gonna go to FXS port. Then for, for the SIP user ID, we can choose random numbers. These numbers, they're not gonna be used as caller ID, but just for configuring call routing, and I will show you later how we're gonna use these SIP user IDs. So I'm just gonna give, for example, FXS1, the SIP user ID 1111, 2222, 3333. Then this is where we do, uh, that, that's enough. I mean, by the way, uh, making those they, those settings are more than enough. You can also add FXS port four if you want to. And then at the bottom here, this is where we configure the FXS to FXO port mapping. So I want FXS one to go on FXS one. And then here I'm gonna put the IP address of the, uh, the FXO gateway and the port number is going to be 5060. By default, this is on all Grand Stream devices. The first port is always using 5060. The second port uses 5062. Third port, 5064. It's like the numbers, they increment by two. The same thing applies to the FXL gateway. So for the second FXS, I wanted to go through FXO port number two on the same gateway for FXO port two, it's using port 5062. Then I want FXS three to go on FXO three on the same gateway. So I'm just gonna keep putting the same IP and then 64 and the same thing for FXS port number four. And then change the port of course to 5066. Make sure you apply the changes. Then we're just gonna go back to the FXO gateway, login, and these are the changes that you need to make. The first thing, create an account. The SIP server is gonna be the IP address of the FXS gateway. So I'm gonna save. I'm not gonna reboot until I finish all the settings. Go back here, SIP settings. Make sure you check that one to know because we're not gonna be using SIP registration. Again, save and apply. Next, go to settings, uh, channel settings. And this is where you're gonna configure your call into VoIP, which means when the call comes from the FXO channel, where do you wanna send it? So this is where we're gonna do the configuration. For example, channel one, I wanted to use uh, 11. Copy. Then I'm going to start making the changes. Channel two, I want it to go to the SIP user ID 22. You remember we configured those under FXS uh, uh, gateway under the FXS settings three, and then the last one is going to be four, and we want to send it in channel four. So we only have one profile, so that's gonna be profile one, which we configured under account. Then for the SIP destination port, we're gonna add plus plus. 
when you put plus plus that means the call on first channel one is going to be sent to the IP address of the FXS gateway using port 5060. If there is a call coming on FXO2, then you want the FXO gateway to send it to the uh, FXS gateway on port 5062. So when you add two pluses here, that means the number of each port, FXS port, is going to increment by two. So after we make those changes, we're just going to uh, apply them. Then we're going to go to uh, FXO lines in terms of dialing. Uh, wait for dial tone. I'm just going to leave that one. No, we're going to use stage dialing two. I'm sorry, one. And then the round robin, we're just going to disable that one because we don't want the round robin because we, we remember we are using uh, uh, FXS to FXO port mapping. So I'm just going to make the changes like this, three, so that the ports will not round robin. You can leave those settings by default. And then now I can reboot my uh, gateway. So after the uh, the uh, the FXS our the FXO gateway rebooted. Then I'm going to make a couple of test calls and see if it's working. Let me see. Log back in. Admin. All right. So I'm just going to go to status. So I'm going to try to call on FXS. I'm sorry, FXO port one and see if the call actually will go to uh, busy. So now I'm calling line one. Let's see if the FXS gateway is actually ringing on line one, which is the case. So I'm just going to hang up. Then I'm going to test line two. Okay. So I'm going to call line two and see if the call will actually go to FXS number two. So it's busy. That means the line FXO line is picking up the line. So I'm just going to go to settings on the FXO. And you will see that the call actually went to FXS two on the FXS uh, gateway. The same thing applies if you call from the FXS to the FXO, the same thing, which means if you pick up FXS1, the call will go through FXO1. If you pick up the call from FXS2, the call is going to go through FXO2 and vice versa. So I hope this video was helpful to you and thank you for watching uh, this video.